we had some technical difficulties on Sunday, and I just want to, you know, share the message with you. And uh, I, I remember back when my kids were really small, and, and I feel like I made like a, like a Christmas tactical error. And what I mean is, we would buy them all these presents, and, uh, and, and when our kids were little, they would open the first one and be just so blown away by it. And it was probably one of the smaller things that we got them. And, uh, you know, it was kind of build up to the big gift. And, and, but, but they were so into the first one. And I remember thinking to myself, man, why did we buy all this other stuff? I mean, obviously, because we love them. But, you know, they, they, they would have spent like months playing with just this one toy. In fact, they would have probably spent months just playing with the box. But we had, you know, we, we told them, hey, wait a second. You know, put that one aside. There's another gift. And then there's another gift and another gift. And, and I think what that does to us as human beings is it, it, it kind of builds in this, this idea that, that there's something bigger and maybe better that, that I had better wait for. Now, again, good things do come to those who wait. And we're in the season of Advent, which is a season of waiting. But, uh, but there's so many things that, um, that we, 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 we got to kind of be careful that we don't wait to do them. Uh, and, and the biggest one is listening to God. And we're going to talk about that today. Because I think it's so important for us to not just listen and hear, right, the sermon or hear a, a Bible study or read a Bible passage. But to really listen from a biblical point of view is to actually do what it says, Right? We know this. Our kids, we tell them, hey, clean your room. Or, uh, you know, could you help and take out the trash? Or, hey, get off the Xbox. Or whatever it is. Now, how many times do they actually say, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And what that means is you're, you're yelling at me and, and I'm having to deal with that. But I'm not actually going to get up and do what it is that I was going to do. Or that you have asked me to do. So I heard you with my ears physically, but I didn't hear you like at a heart level or on a, a soul level. Because when you hear it on that level, it, it changes you, right? When we hear God saying that we, that we need him, when we hear God saying that we have sinned and we have fallen short and that we need his love every day, we needed Jesus to come down here. When we hear that on a soul level and on a heart level, it, it makes us like, like trust in him and repent and go and, 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 and live that thing out. Okay, so today as we continue this series called What Are You Waiting For? Today is gonna, we're going to be asking the question, like, uh, when are we, what are we waiting for in terms of listening to God and, and, and taking him seriously, taking his word serious, his message seriously? And the text we want to look at is from Matthew chapter 11. Um, and and that's, we're going to start in verse 2. Uh, and, we're, and we're talking about John the Baptist. Now, last week, if you watched the video from last week, uh, we, we heard about John. And he was there preparing the way for Jesus. He said that the one coming after me is greater than I am. Uh, John was really clear about that. In fact, his whole garb, right? He had leather belt. He had camel's hair coat that he was wearing. And he, and he had kind of ate locusts and wild honey. It was his, his whole vibe. Everything about him screamed that he was not in this for him. He, was, he had a, a very specific purpose for his life. And Jesus is going to talk about that in just a few verses here. But, but John thought, and John's expectation was very similar to everyone else's at that time, that, that the one to come, this Messiah, which is like the technical term for him, uh, this, this uh, promised savior of the world, was going to be like a military. He was going to come in and, and just take over, very political, very kind of militaristic, um, God's going to rain down fire from the sky, totally destroy the, the Roman occupation and their power. Uh, all the worldly powers will just be just done away with, and, and, and Jesus is going to reign on his throne. So, again, Jesus born in a manger doesn't really look all that, right, from a worldly perspective, doesn't look all that uh, powerful or all that significant, does it? But that's the point. See, when, when we listen and when we hear God, very often it's not what we think. It's not how we see. See, scripturally, you see that God gives us eyes to see and ears to hear. And that's called faith. So he gives me the ability to hear what, what I couldn't normally hear with just my own intellect and my own ability. 
to see what I, what I can't see with these eyes, even with glasses on, right? Even with contacts, even with a, a telescope, I wouldn't be able to see it. But, but I see it because he gives me eyes to see. And that's what we have going on here. Because John, I don't know, he, he's in prison. And so this fire from heaven, right, this revolution is going down. Maybe the way he thought, and perhaps it's why he sent his, um, some of his disciples to see Jesus. Because he had heard in prison what Jesus was doing. So he sends word to the disciples. He, he wants to ask them a question, to Jesus a question. Are you the one who was to come? Or shall we look for another? Again, are you, wait, are, are, are you, are you still waiting? Is, are John and his disciples still waiting for the promised one? Or is Jesus really him? Do, are we going to listen to him? Are we going to take his lead? Are we going to say, yes, he is the one? And Jesus answers them and he says, go tell John what you hear and what you see. And what does that tell you? When you see that the blind receive their sight, when the lame walk, when you see that lepers are cleansed, that the deaf people hear and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news to them. What does that preach to you? What does, what, what does that do to your soul? What does that do in your heart? Now, if you know anything about the Old Testament, right, and this is like where the Old Testament kind of comes around, that, that those were things that only God would do, and those would be signs. Those would be a gigantic sign and, and a gigantic message. Hey, he's here. He's the one. Because, and you'll know it because he's doing those things. And they're not tricks. It's not a show. He's there. He's opening up the eyes of the blind. He's, he's making those who couldn't walk, walk again. Those whose, whose bodies are just breaking down with leprosy. They are clean again. They are restored to health and, and also spiritual health. And, and they can hear again. And, and those who are even dead live Again, and those who are hopeless and lost and poor, they are they're having good news brought to them. So if their ears, if our ears hear, we say, okay, that's, Jesus is the one to come. We don't have to wait for anyone else or anything else in our life. See, and that's part of the problem is that we're just like those crowds, right? Maybe we're, we're chasing this next exciting thing. We're chasing this next exciting experience. Maybe during Christmas, it's got to be bigger than last year. It's going to be better than last year. The gift will be the perfect gift. Now, let me ask you, how many times have you heard just, we're three weeks into to this Advent season. I mean, how many times have you heard that it's the perfect gift? And, and, and the thing is that every single commercial that says it's the perfect gift is for something that will break. It's going to wear out. It's going to be out of fashion. It's not permanent. It's not eternal. But Jesus is. He's the perfect gift. And so we got to ask ourselves, what are we waiting for? Are we waiting for some, someone else or something else to show up so that we actually sit at his feet and listen? And we actually sit, you know, open up his word and say, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. Let me know what this is all about because I need to know and I need to have my heart made right with you. And I, and I need to know who you are and what you're all about. So Jesus asks the crowds as, as these messengers from John go away. Um, he says, all right, let's talk about John for a minute. Let's talk about John the Baptist. What did you go out there to see in the wilderness? Was it some reed shaken by the wind? Somebody who was just, that you could sort of manipulate or, or maybe that would just change with the, you know, with the, whatever the fat is or whatever the, the latest cool thing or teaching is? Uh, was it somebody that, that you wanted to see who was in fancy clothes? He, he calls them soft clothing. And when we talk about this, did you, were you looking for a show? Because king's palaces are where you're going to find guys who dress like that. Did you go to see a prophet? I mean, was it, was it a spiritual thing? Were you look, longing to hear from God? He goes, yeah. He goes, that, that's, he's a prophet, but he's more than a prophet. In fact, this is the one the prophets, right? And, and, he, and he quotes Malachi. And, 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 you know, elsewhere in Scripture, we hear him quoted as Isaiah prophesying. And could you imagine that? Somebody predicting and the, the prophets talking about your arrival? Because there's two people in the scripture that it's, it's, it's Jesus and it's John. Those are the two whose, whose arrivals were foretold. And so Malachi 3, uh, I think it's verse 1. Behold, I sent my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. 
He says, Jesus says in verse 11, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there is arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. Now from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears, let him hear. Now if you look elsewhere in Matthew, from this point on, if you keep going into chapter 12 and chapter 13, you're going to hear him. Jesus will, will say a whole bunch of things and say, hey, if you have ears, hear. Listen. Don't look at what you see. It's not about a show. It's not about how the guy is dressed. It's not about any of those things. It's, it's about the Savior coming. It's about Jesus dying for you. And, and for John, yeah, it, it, it wasn't happening perhaps as he or others had thought. There were, there were violent things being, that were coming against God's reign in the world, right? The devil was pushing back in a big way. John is in prison. He's about to be beheaded. So outwardly, yeah, it doesn't look all that encouraging. But inwardly, spiritually, like, like what's really happening, what God is really doing is, is sending Jesus to that cross where he will die and rise for us, where he will pay the price for every one of our sins. The eyes of, of faith see that and say, yes. That's what love is. That's what true power is. That's what true victory and glory look like. Giving everything for the sake of the world. For giving, God, God giving us everything for us, for me and for you. That we might be saved. That we might know who he is. And so let us with, this, with these ears of faith listen. And see that John was the one. As wild as he looked but that his whole life was so devoted to, 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 to preparing the way for Jesus, for getting that message out there, preparing men's hearts, that they might know who he was, that they might repent, that they might say, Lord, I don't, I don't have the answers. I don't have what it takes, right? And you're, maybe you're feeling that right now. Right? It's, it's getting closer to Christmas. You're like, I'm just not ready. I just don't know. And I would say, don't worry about the things that are not ready, but look at your heart. And see how he loves you. See how he meets all of our needs. Every single one of them for significance, for hope, right? That we might know that we are saved, that God has not abandoned us and never will abandon us. That he would send someone like John who would pave the way and then Jesus who would come and be that perfect sacrifice for us. Like, what are we waiting for? Like, why don't we take every day and listen? It's one of the great things. We uh, have at our church here uh, some, some devotional material, uh, right? And if you want to uh, put in the comments or something and ask for those, we can get you a reference to those. I'll put that maybe in the comments. But it's so important every day. Because he's got the words of eternal life, right? This word speaks to us. This word gives us the hope that we need because it tells us about Jesus not something made up, not something that we dreamed up, but what he has given to us. Sure and certain. Right? We can look at each of the words and see that it's from him to us. Each and every, each, every part of it showing his love for us. Showing that victory over death and the grave that he won. See, that's how great this gift is. This Christmas gift. So instead of worrying about whether he's the reason for the season, because he totally is, but I think it goes way bigger than that. Because he's, he's the reason for every day. Uh, we live with that victory every day. We live with that, with that forgiveness and that love every single day. And so I'm praying that as we get into the home stretch here, right, this, this next Sunday is the last Sunday right before Christmas, that we just take some time and listen as we open up the word, as we talk to each other, that we would listen and hear what God is saying to us. In his name, I pray, and I wish you all just a blessed Christmas. Amen.